I think we could have seen a stoppage. And if Nate would have got a last-minute stoppage, a literal last-minute stoppage against Leon Edwards, we're talking about, you know, one of the biggest fights the 170 division could ever see. What's up, Barnhill family? Welcome back to the channel. Yo, yo. So, Leon Edwards, Nate Diaz, the non-title fight that went five rounds. Yes. Um, Historical moment. It, it wouldn't have been a Nate Diaz fight if the last 30 seconds hadn't happened. Oh, my I mean, God. Leon Edwards looked spectacular. Right. Leon, he showed Muay Thai skills with some of those step-in shelf trips that yeah. were incredibly timed, really good. Uh, showed some great grappling skill, even taking Nate Diaz's back at some at one point yeah. and putting a, a body triangle on him. Uh, the jiu-jitsu black belt, I might remind you, in Nate Diaz. Right. He doesn't get his back taken all that often. He sh Leon showed everything that I wanted to see from him last night to say that I believe he's ready for a title shot. And then, boom, Nate Diaz just hits him with this crazy punch out of nowhere yeah. uh, and almost ends the fight at the end of it. It was a wild fight. Uh, congratulations to Leon. He yeah. looked spectacular, except for that last 30 seconds. Um, and Nate Diaz is just Nate Diaz. He's yeah. going to be Nate Diaz. He's going to do the things he does. Him and his brother, it reminded me almost of when Nick fought Anderson Silva and he laid down on his back and, you know, put his back up against the cage. That's just kind of what those guys do. But Nate, did, or Leon rather, didn't get caught up in the moment. He didn't allow himself to get roped and allured into what Nate Diaz wanted to get him into. Right. And I thought Leon looked spectacular. He did. He looked really good, stayed composed, you know. When somebody's playing those types of games with you in a fight and, and, and these antics and these, you know, it's almost like he's trolling in a way, you, you can either take the bait or you can stay calm, stay composed. And Leon decided to stay calm and stay composed rather than give the fans exactly what they want, which is to run into Nate Diaz when he's turned his back towards you or, you know, starts just charging you with crazy shots and stuff. So, uh, Leon, you know, you have to give him credit. He, this was the biggest stage, biggest fight of his life. And uh, it really did um, matter for him to win. If he, didn't, if he didn't win this, he'll never get a UFC title. You know, he's just one of those guys that's so unlucky. Even after eight wins, if you lose to Nate Diaz, it's right back to the back yeah. of the, to the line for him. Of 170, of which 170. is just a crazy division to try to work your way to the top of. Yeah, and, and Nate Diaz, on the other hand, was, was you know— essentially one fight away and he's not you know had the best prettiest record as of late but he was one win away from probably being the winner of Colby versus Kamara's next matchup so I I really loved the fight I thought that Leon did what he had to do to win and Nate Diaz's stock just rose even higher like we knew he was an entertainer we knew he was a star going into this but it takes Sometimes we have to get reminded just how special an athlete is, uh, and especially like somebody like Nate Diaz who doesn't compete all that often, but when he does, it's just special. And uh, I, I've, I was really happy last night because he delivered in, in, in typical Nate Diaz fashion. The last minute of that fight literally had everybody in this house screaming, yeah. going insane. And I feel like the entire uh, city of... Uh, Stockton, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, city of Stockton, the entire state of Arizona was shaking during that last minute. Yeah, of that twenty-five minutes. They they thought it was a mild earthquake or something. Right. I mean, it was that was wild. Yeah, but Leon was clearly the better fighter last right. night, and right. Le Leon showed tremendous skill. Um, I, like I said, he, he showed some really nice Muay Thai sweeps, which yes. you don't see very often mm -mm. in MMA. Uh, that's much more common in, in the Muay Thai circuits, but they were beautiful nonetheless. Uh, I was most impressed by the fact that he was able to win some of the grappling exchanges. I thought yeah. even from the bottom that Nate would have an advantage in the grappling if it got to the ground, uh, but I was wrong in a lot of those instances. Leon kind of was able to be the one who was leading the dance and controlling from a from a top pressure perspective and hitting some ground and pound, even slicing the side of Nate's head open. Uh, Nate Diaz is one of those guys that like win or lose, he's getting a big fight. It's just yeah. weird. He's just one of those people. Like win, you probably fight in the winner of Colby versus Kamaru. Lose, you're looking at a rematch with Jorge Masvidal, most likely, who yeah. just lost to Kamaru and maybe the BMF titles on the on the line. So he, he's, he's in one of those positions where it's like win or lose, you're getting a title shot. Yeah. It's, it's, or it's, Conor McGregor, the biggest fight you can possibly get. Or the yeah. red panty night. Yeah, yeah. so it's, it's weird. It's, and Nate's, Nate's just one of those guys. He's an enigma. Um, but 
I think really the story here is, and we could talk about how Nate could have finished that fight last night. Uh, you know, he, he certainly had Leon rocked and conventional wisdom tells you when you have somebody rocked like that, you, you close the distance, you shuffle in, shuffle in, and you hit him again with that same shot. Yeah. And if he had done that, I think he could have finished Leon last night. Yeah. Um, that's not what happened. Uh, and, and so Leon won the fight and rightfully so. But it's, it's like, that's those things. It's like, man, I want to see something out of Nate. Yeah. Like, I, I, I want to see something that I can be like, man, I can't believe that happened. And now I'm super charged up for his next fight. And in typical Nate fashion, he gave it to us. But now kind of looking forward to what's in Leon's future, it's, it's going to be a title shot. I think he can Likely. probably sit around and just depending on when the timing of Kamaru Colby happens and if something crazy happens in the interim, like if Hamzat Chemaev strings off three crazy wins in three weeks like he's been known to do, yeah. or if Stephen Wonderboy Thompson has a prolific performance. You just It's a fast-moving sport, yeah. uh, and I'd like to say in a perfect world, Leon – can take his wars out of the water and be guaranteed a title shot. But I don't think we can really say that for certain. Yeah, no, I think he might actually have to fight again just because of the timing of the championship bout. And, you know, like you said, Hamzat is known for rattling off victories three in 90 days and, you know, some in two days. And I think Hamzat's two fights away, two wins away at 170 from fight to being a top contender. Wonderboy Thompson as well. So he might end up getting paired up with one of those guys just while he waits. And, you know, you can't really blame him. But if I was Leon, the last thing I would want to do is uh, sit around and wait for a long period of time like he already did uh in this last extended layoff, um, you know, Leon has the skills to beat or to be at the, the highest level of 170 division, but you know, he has to stay fresh. I feel like maybe if he was a more consistent fighter, he would have felt a little bit more comfortable in there, a little bit more confident in his skills and, uh, just have, have more, uh, you know, you know how it goes. Yeah. You, you, you got to shake the rust off a little bit when you haven't had a ton of cage experience, you know, within several years. So, yeah, I think I think that another fight might serve him well yeah. in the interim just because, you know, the last time he went a full distance in a fight was against RDA. And that was back in 2019. Right. You had the weird situation with Bilal Muhammad. But I think a lot of this is going to really ride on. What and it's going to sound crazy for me saying this, but what happens between Conor McGregor and Dustin Poirier? Yeah, true. Because if Conor McGregor loses again to Dustin Poirier, we can kind of put him out of the category of people contending for a title. Right. And then it becomes what's fun for Conor McGregor, what's fun for the fans. And the Nate, Nate Diaz trilogy makes perfect sense. Yeah. So if you pull Nate away and put him against Conor next, because we know both of those guys only have a handful of fights left, yeah. and one of them's going to be against each other. Yeah. And so you pull you pull. Nate away and you put him against Connor, then Jorge doesn't have a dance partner. Yeah. And we all have to remember the three piece in the soda. Mm -hmm. Leon's been wanting Jorge to answer for that three piece in the soda for quite some time. Right. So if you if you end up in a situation where Colby Kamaru is a little bit further in the future than than Leon would like, or, or if Colby if, wins, and right? Then they have to do a trilogy, exactly. Or if Wonder Boy Thompson has a spectacular performance, it could open up a situation by which Leon would fight Jorge. And I personally think that would be great for Leon because I think Leon matches up well against Masvidal. I think yeah. he would beat Masvidal. And I also think that, well, I don't think, I know that Masvidal is one of the biggest stars in the sport. So a win over Nate Diaz and then a win over Masvidal, Leon Edwards has now solved his problem of not being a household name. Yeah. And then he can make a boatload of money and then fight for the title. So it's really going to be interesting how it shakes out. But all in all, I think that Leon has showed us that with his skill set last night, He's top caliber. Now, is it enough to beat Colby and Kamaru? I'm not ready to say that yet. No. I, I didn't see enough to say that I think he would beat one of those two guys because I think those guys are literally like 1A and 1B, and then there is a decent separation between the rest at 170. Yeah. But I certainly think Leon showed enough last night to say that his name should absolutely be considered for contention. Yeah, and you know, when you look at MMA, you can't really do MMA math, but I – try to picture the the top two guys in there with Nate Diaz behind Leon Edwards. So Colby Covington and Kamaru Usman, in my opinion, if they got in there with Nate Diaz, it would it would look a little bit worse for yeah, Nate they Diaz. They would have ragged all that. It, it would have looked really bad. And um, 
that's that's no slight on Nate. He's a 155er that moves back and yeah. forth, and he's just a big name, and he's a really great fighter. But those two guys are just absolute hammers, literally the two best guys in the world. And um, and they're very competitive when they fight. So it's it, they're just high level. And, you know, Leon, he did the right thing when he got rocked. But uh, he looked really good until that last moment. But when, when Nate Diaz rocked him, what he should have done is what we say all the time is, you know, the, the crowd goes wild for somebody like Nate Diaz. So when the ref is is, is refing a fight and his, only, his number one job is to keep the fighter safe yeah. when, when he feels like they can't protect themselves, right? When, when the crowd went insane, Nate should have put his foot on the gas and started throwing things, even if they weren't landing 100%, if they were kind of getting blocked while Leon was rocked. Because when the crowd's going crazy and, and you start going crazy as well on your opponent, the ref sees that and feels the energy and there's this sense of urgency. We always refer to Terrence Crawford being really good at that. He Best goes, finisher in the game. Yeah, he goes insane and some of it's theatrics. But it's it's important for him to do and the ref sees it and he you know, he'll shove people into the ropes and start yeah. bashing up. If Nate would have hit him a couple of times and thrown him into the wall and kept going, I think we could have seen a stoppage. And if Nate would have got a last minute stoppage, a literal last minute stoppage against Leon Edwards, we're talking about, you know, one of the biggest fights the one seventy division could ever see when you have Nate Diaz versus Kamaru Usman, who is also an emerging star. Yeah. And even though I don't think that fight would be competitive, it would just pull crazy pay per view yeah, it would be huge. numbers. But, you know, and if you really do want to see what we're talking about, guys, go check out uh, Terrence Crawford's finishes. I mean, yeah. as soon as he has an opponent hurt, he just jumps on them like a wild animal. And, and, and he's, he's technical, but he's wild at the same time. It's right. almost like a controlled chaos. He's throwing heavy punches. He's making it look theatrical. He's making it look dramatic, but he is landing them. Yeah. And I think Nate did let his foot off the gas just a little bit when he had Leon hurt. Now, I can't say because it didn't happen. Maybe Leon would have done an amazing job of covering up and hugging and being able to just work a clinch and, and be the bigger, stronger guy. I'm not saying that Leon couldn't have survived that. He certainly could have. But Nate Diaz also could have pressured a little bit better at the end there, yeah. and we might have seen something crazy happen. Yeah, but win, lose, or draw, his stock continues to rise. He, I had the biggest cheers in the entire arena last night. He left and went through a major house party. You know, we were wondering why he wasn't staying at the Athlete Hotel. He was, had a big party. There's always a rhyme and a reason to everything that somebody like Nate Diaz does. And uh, I think a huge party hosted by him and the Nelk boys to promote that new Happy Dad, or as he called it, the new Daddy Drink for, for, the, for the Nelk boys, was, uh, was a part of the plan. They, they had a huge uh, house out there in like the hills of, of Arizona. Yeah, it looks cool. It looked really cool. And I bet that house party last night was probably uh, a, a fun one to be at. I'm sure the folks out there that went enjoyed themselves, had some of the Daddy Drinks, and they got to hang with... He wasn't the winner last night, but he was one of the biggest stars in the entire world of combat sports. Yeah, I think you're right. And I'm sure Leon Edwards had quite the after party himself. Yeah, and hey, he yeah, might have even yeah. shown up. Yeah, and, maybe he and, went and there. Got yeah, yeah. Because Nate did show him a lot of respect. He was like, you know, this guy's having a hard time getting fights, and he's done a lot of things right. He's, he's, he's winning, so uh, I, I want to test myself against the best. That's what I love about Nate Diaz, and that's why he's going to continue to rise in this sport, and he's going to continue to get the biggest fights. For sure. Well, guys, Nate Diaz may have earned some new fans last night and certainly reinvigorated his diehard fans, but it was ultimately Leon Edwards' night last night. He looked phenomenal. And let us know in the comments, do you think he's ready for a title shot, and can he beat the winner of Colby and Kamaru? We'd love to have a discussion with you guys there. We love chatting with you guys in the comments. So please like, comment, and subscribe if you've liked this video, and we will check out, see you in the next one. <laughs> Peace.